Welcome back to Redbird Arena. I'm Ann Penstone along with Bonnie Beach. And Bonnie, we've already had one great match and we're ready for number two. This is a class double A where we've got the returning runner-up Downers Grove South and coach Judy Gresham and her team knocked off for the first time in her 19 years defending champ Mother Macaulay and they're going to face number one ranked Lockport. Well, coach Julia Hudson of Lockport said ours is a flamboyant offense and then she said Downers Grove South are blasters and we love to play bangers so this should be a real show of fireworks. We have a great hitter from Downers Grove South in Terry Midas, and we've been able to see a little bit of her last year. She's come back stronger than ever, but Lockport has people of their own, and here you see Terry Midas warming up, and she is ready. She has had some beautiful tournament play already, and she'll be a very, very exciting player to watch. Well, Lockport with their flamboyant offense has a little flamboyance of their own. They've got some twins that aren't too bad. They really do. They have a set of twins who play. You can see them warming up here. One of them sets, the other one hits. Number seven, Jennifer, is a hitter. She's also the number one scholar in her class, and Nicole is a setter. Well, we've got two powers going right at each other, and we've got double-A action right after this. And now for our lineups, let's go to PA announcer Julie Bolt. And now meet the players who will compete in this session's Class AA Championship match. For the visiting Porters of Lockport, who enter the match with a record of 39 wins and three losses, please meet Coach Julia Hudson. <laughs> Coach Hudson has a career record of 437 wins, 104 losses, and one tie for a career of 14 years. The non-starting players for the Porters are number one, Rebecca Kwasniewski. Number three, Stacy Wagner. Number five, Joy Cecil. Number six, Carrie Ann Travis. Number nine, Christine Johnson. Number 10, Renee Zabel. Number 13, Carrie Bashkellis. Number 14, Courtney Fisk. And number 15, Kristen Manley. The starting lineup for Lockport. In right back, a 5'11 senior, Sarah Kozak. In right front, a 5'9 junior, number two, Kara Pash. In center front, a 5'9 senior, number 11, Nicole Peterson. In left front, a 6'1 senior, number 4, Amy Lemmerman. In left back, a 5'8 senior, number 7, Jennifer Peterson. And in center back, a five-time senior, number eight, Megan Maxwell. For the home team, the Mustangs of Downers Grove South, who enter the match with a record of 38 wins and four losses, please meet coach Judy Gresham. Coach Gresham has a career record of 385 wins, 200 losses for a career of 19 years. The non-starting players for the Mustang. Number one, Karen Stoyer. Number three, Kim Zelinski. Number four, Chris Williams. 
Number six, Sarah Zimmerman. Number eight, Sally Butler. Number nine, Katie Wise. Number 10, Christy Boker. Number 11, Kelly Daly. And number 12, Stacy Vargas. The starting lineup for Downers Grove South. In right back, a six foot senior. Number 13, Amy Thompson. In right front, a 5'10 junior. Number two, Tracy Black. In center front, a 5'7 freshman. Number seven, Liz Ortigal. In left front, a 6'2 senior. Number 15, Terry the Midas. In left back, a 5'10 sophomore. Number 14, Tracy Marshall. And in center back, a 5'6 senior. Number 5, Nicole Little. There are the players. We'll be back with the action right after this message. Bonnie, we're back at Redburn Arena, and we're all ready for Class AA action, and what an expectation we have for this match. Well, we do. If, if all things are considered, this could be like the 4th of July again, and we could be back with a lot of fireworks and a lot of offensive explosions. Well, Downers Go South has been playing very well, and Coach Julia Hudson says Lockport is ready to let it all hang out. Here we go to serve Amy Thompson, the senior for the Mustangs. The officials are Beth Bedard, and up on the stand is Von Seal Carlson. Sorry, that's Beth up top, and Von Seal down is the umpire. Good serve, and Tracy Black puts it down, and they get right off in a hurry. We might say that one of the things Julia Hudson said was that it would be a great offensive show if we can get past their serves. They've got to pass the ball well. There's a reason Amy Thompson serves first. Point. Downers Grove South is a very, very tough serving team. They have two players who do jump serves and everybody does placement serves and they're very good at what they do. Whoa, whoa. Leverman knocks on Tracy Marshall's side out. Knocked her right in the face. That is a wake up call. Hello, hello, I am here. <laughs> Back to serve is Sarah Kozak. Outside and off the net. Tara passes hit side out. Subject number two, Tracy Black. Tracy Black is one of the two jump servers. She is fairly consistent with it and very deadly. Rotation down. Setting back row to Black, but picked up nicely. Cole Peterson with the dump. Amy Thompson from the back row sends it out of bounds, side out. Nicole Peterson from the right side in the front row has what you would wish every setter could do, and she handles the ball very well. She is a, an offensive threat, and you never know whether she's gonna dump the ball, jump up and hit the ball, or set the ball. Entering the game for the Porters is Kristen Manley, a 5'6 sophomore, and she's back to serve. Her team's down 0-2, first game, double-A championship match. Goes at Black in the corner. Right at Zemitis, tipped off the block, side out. Terry Zemitis, you see standing at the net, is quite a force in the middle. Not only is she quite a force, but she is a very intense player, and so she, she
she can be intimidating to look at on the other side of the net. Net, ball. net violation. Side out. Downs yourself has had quite a bit, quite a few net violations in this tournament. They had a real problem with it in the semifinals. They got called for five or six net violations in one game. Nicole Peterson comes back with her own jump serve. There's the Midas with the power slam. That's the wham we see going up on the board here at Red no Bird Arena. No kidding. Watch her again, and the ball is set beautifully. And Zemitis over the backside. She just she passed the ball and then came in to hit it. Here's her jump serve. Very effective. Zemitis said she learned that jump serve from Tracy Black. She learns her lessons well. She did indeed. Downers up 3-0. Tries to hit a little bit too much of the sideline and sends it out of bounds, side out. Substitution for Lockport. Coming in is number three, Stacy Wagner. A 5'6 senior. She'll go back to serve in place of Amy Lemmerman. Porters need to get on the board and she'd like to do it. Cover the ball. Net foul. Net violation, and the Porters are trying to take advantage of us. Uh, something a lot of coaches have looked at that space behind the block of Downers Grove South side, and we they are on the board. Nice serve back to Black. Outside to Thompson, off the block. Three ball. Nice save by Ortigal. And finding a spot is Nicole Little. Side out. Nicole has really been a, a finesse hitter. And she looks very good in terms of getting up in the air and looking at what she is hitting into. So she often finds spaces on the floor and is able to hit around what's in front of her. Into the game for the Mustangs is Sarah Zimmerman. She is definitely a serving specialist. This is her one place of rotation. She does it very well. There's Nicole Little with her finesse right there at the net. Once again, and if we can emphasize the younger players, if you watch, watch her go up again in the air. That's not a hard hit. It's a soft hit for a little, but it goes down, and they record it for an ace and a point or a side out, just like a big hit. Great serve by Zimmerman. Causes a free ball by the Porters. Or to go back to Thompson, who unfortunately, as she crosses over, puts her foot across right the line, side out. You notice the ribbons in the hair of the Downers Grove South Mustangs. That's the, last year, they had a color for every one of the teams that they had beaten. It seems to be predominantly blue on blue this year. It, it does seem to be that, but we also know that if you look at the Porters' shoes, they have different colors on their shoes, and they have a color for each team they played on the way through to the state tournament. I know they'd like to add blue to the list, but I don't they think Downers Grove South is going to make it easy here. Back to serve is twin Jennifer Peterson. She is the hitter. Outside, here's your first look at Tracy Black and the quick arm swing. Picked up nicely. There's Thompson and finds the open spot just left by Jennifer Peterson. Now, Side out. A, a beautiful one-two punch. Great hit by Black. And the digging by the Porters just brought the ball up to the net. And Thompson was able to put it away. Nicole Little. Picked up by Zemitis. Nice dig by Peterson. Hash, cross court picked up by Black. Back to her. Off the block, yes, yeah, she has a very a quick arm again. She does, she has, there is a, a hitter with beautiful hitting mechanics. She's got a great approach, it's a very definite approach. Good stop, nice high jump, and an excellent arm swing and extension. Just a junior. 5-1, Downers Grove South. 
Nice dig by Zemitis. Great save. Beautiful dig by Zemitis. Great extension in the backcourt. If you can imagine, that's a 6-2 player digging out that ball. It shows her all-around capabilities and why so many people are wanting her for their college team. Well, not only that, but with 6-2 body frame, <laughs> she's got a great reach. Megan Maxwell serving for the Porters. They're down 1-5. Back set's going to hit the antenna. And point Lockport. Point Lockport. Eight, See Zemitis going up and talking to the setter, and um, Julie is only a freshman, and this is a pretty huge task, and we'll tell you her story in a little bit. She sets Tracy Black. Left-handed goes Cole Peterson. Maxwell outside to pass. Block out of bounds. Point. One at a time, the Porter's climbing back up. They've been slow starting in the tournament. They finished very well. Yes, they do. Back row to Zemitis. Bash goes deep on Maxwell. Block beautifully in the outside against Black. Very nice, Black. Black by Peterson and Kozak. You watch the block form again. Both hitters going, blockers going up, and they get black. She tries to dig her block on the way down and can't pull it out. Going back row attack again. Oh, what a save nice by Zemitis off the back row called a dig. Oh, what an effort. And we're all tied up at five, Bonnie. Here are the Porters bringing it back. Going deep, picking on Zemitis. Over to Black. Goes over the block this time. Outside to pass. Dinked. And on it, Nicole Little made a great attempt at it, but the Porters are really playing well. As Downers go south, wants a timeout to talk about it. Well, with the first lead of the game right now for the Porters, we'll be back right after this. <laughs> Megan Maxwell continuing her run. She's got five straight points for the Porters and like to keep it going. Coach Judy Gresham in her last year of coaching and like to put a stop to it right here. The Black Nice dig. Thompson on the dig, out of bounds. Right out of bounds. Point. Point. And we are being treated to a really beautiful thing on this side of the court. We're able to see Black right over her shoulder when she hits, and she has such beautiful hitting mechanics. Net serve. Net serve by Maxwell ends her run, and it's going to go back over, and Amy Thompson starts the second round of serving. And now this time they're down by two. tried to put the ball over the net with her back to the ball, and you just can't do that, especially not with somebody like Zemitis at the net. Hard enough when you're looking at her. Kozak off the block. Pash blocked out of bounds. Pash just really, she knew she had the two blockers up there. We get a chance to look at this again, and the ball comes up and it's hit really hard, and she just, that's a good thing to do. If you can hit the ball really hard into the blockers and cause it to rebound out of bounds. Amy Lemmerman back in for the Porters and back to serve Sarah Kozak. <laughs> to Zemitis is now in the front row, block, big block, that's a psycho block for Pete. Right there, like a big wall. They are sending a message here. Oh, in the middle. Oh, Peter's with the Lemmerman. Beautiful, beautiful set. And Lemmerman coming through. She is very strong. 
strong on the ball. All the hitters that we have seen in technically and mechanically are beautiful. These are these are people who could serve as great role models. Well, what it is is two heavyweights going right at each other. Neither one of them intimidated. We'll give you our best up. What are you going to do with it? That's right. These are sluggers, blasters. Whatever it was Julia Hudson said, that's what these are. Well, folks, you're getting a treat right here. There's two great volleyball teams and a great serve by Tracy Black. Outside pass. And outside out. Lockport is running their offense and taking their offense to the outside, and they are hitting line extremely well right now. And I mean line on the line. They are doing a beautiful job. Well, we know Julia Hudson said it was really crucial on the jump serves to serve receive, and so far, only one point out of both of them. That's great. Kristen Manley back to serve for the Porters. They lead 9-6. because I think they were they were recovering from what they did with McCauley. They'd set their sights on them, but right now they've got different sights. They want to come back in the championship match, so they go to Zemitis, and she comes through for them. Not always power, change it up. You know, this, this is a guess, but this may have been what Judy Gresham told her team is we're playing a power game right now, so let's change the speed a little bit and see if they can take what we're giving them hard and soft. Especially since we know Julia Hudson's team would rather play against Bangers. Right. Bangers and Blasters. And there we go again. I think nice, you're right, yeah. Bonnie. Nice soft shot. Point. Both the shots have been nice and easy right into the middle. And we see this again. Zemitis going up and just a nice soft shot in the middle. And we've got all of Lockport's defense set up to just sit back and dig the ball. And they have to move for it instead. Oh, but right there we have an answer by Amy Lemmerman on the quick Peterson set. Peterson to Lemmerman. Peterson to Lemmerman right here through the middle. And Lemmerman just, whoa, she beats the Midas in the middle, hits the ball right between her hands before she ever gets up. Great camera shot to see how it, that action developed. Nicole Peterson on the jump serve. The Midas on the power. Now she switches up and goes back to the power game successfully, side out. You watch her come through again, Zemitis, this time, wham, and she just really bangs the ball right through Jennifer Peterson. So it's kind of wham for wham up here. Nice serve. Picked up nicely. Now that's somebody we hadn't heard from yet. Cassie Matt. Not this match. 
anyway. <laughs> really? Heard from her in other places. This is Tracy Marshall again, coming up and just hitting right through. She got the block before it ever closed and hit a seam in the backcourt. Lucky she got a touch on the block back there because the ball was a little bit long. We're talking about Tracy Marshall just a second ago as Wagner comes back into the quarters. Tracy Marshall led her team in the semifinals. People look at Zemitis and Black, but Marshall was the one who had led the team in kills. So it just proves how balanced you have to be in this tournament. Well, both of these teams, I think, are two of the best balanced teams we've seen here in the finals in a long time. Not a doubt, but ornigal has been the one that's had all the responsibility to set. Now, she come through a freshman. Has only been playing as a starter for two weeks. After replacing their setter who was out with mono. 13-8, Lockport. First game, double-A match. Whoa, nice dig. Beautiful dig. And nice dunk. Oh. Jennifer Peterson over the block. Lockport can do more than just blast the ball also. Just a nice soft shot over the block. Chance for game point. Stacy Wagner serves it up at 14-8. Block. Nicole Little and Amy Thompson say not right now you're not. No, and you mentioned Liz coming on to set for Downers Grove South. They lost their setter the Tuesday before the pumpkin tournament, which was the first meeting between Lockport and Downers Grove South. We asked Julia Hudson how she thought both teams played. She said, uh, better than average. It was a three-game match, and if this is any indication, it must have been a very oh. exciting one. Well, Sarah Zimmerman came in as a serving South. specialist and did what she did the last time, gets a point. 9-14. Downers go south down. Little with the free ball. Goes with the quick hit. Oh! And just off the timing, unable to dig it out. With Zimmerman and Zemitis side out as coming back in will be Tracy Marshall for the Mustangs. And also entering for the Porters is Pat. Now it's Jennifer Peterson's chance at game point. They're up 15-11 Let's see if history holds and repeats itself as it so often does as Sarah Kozak serves. And we start off right away with a score. She gets the first one down. the point. 
quarters go up 2-0. Comes back with a service ace right through the strength of Downers Grove passing. Try to go a little bit too fancy, goes outside, side out. Amy Thompson gets her chance. The six foot senior. Outside to pass, block, big block. There's a nice team to block with, Black and Zemitis. Black and Zemitis, whoa, like a concrete wall. <laughs> Atypical service error by Amy Thompson, so we'll go side out. She was real disappointed in herself. <laughs> Coming in to serve will be Kristen Manley, number 15 for the Porters, replaces Tara Path. beautiful ball to Zemitis and she was way above the net. You know, and she wants to. She can take control of a game provided we get the passing and setting. It'll be interesting right. to see if that's what she tries to establish here as Tracy Black goes for the jump serve. And a good one. Outside to Jennifer Peterson. Net violation. Side out. And the porters seem to be very calm as they go about this business. They're very impressive in that everybody has a great deal to offer the team. Everybody is working very well and very calmly. They certainly were not overly excited by winning the first game, and they've come back out here like, let's go back to business. They're not a real emotional team. No. But they turn out how to get it done. Oh, great play by... Peterson right in the hole. Nicole, they're exactly where to put it, side out. Nicole has such command as a setter. I mean, she is very aware. She must have great peripheral vision because she doesn't seem to check out very much what she's doing, but when she dumps the ball like that, she's very effective. Back to serve, Stacy Wagner. Lockport leading two to one after winning game one. Picked up outside of Jennifer Peterson and tipped nicely that time. It was Little and Zemitis on the block side out. Now Zemitis just really reaching out for the ball and then redirecting it into an empty space. We'll now go back to serve. Has not had any aces with this serve, so Lockport's been successful in that strategy. Bozak blocked by Little, but out of bounds. Side out. And to finish the story of Luz Ortegal, um, what happened was when Downers Grove lost their setter, lost their setter in the pumpkin tournament, they used a couple of junior setters from the varsity team. Kids worked out okay, but they were still looking, and by the time they got to regionals, um, they had recruited Liz Ortegal as a freshman off the sophomore team. She started running the team in a 6-2 offense, and then by sectionals, she was running the team all by herself, and she's done so well that um, she has just remained the setter. What poise for a freshman, and what a crew to, to uh, set for. Tremendous <laughs> amount of poise. Sarah Zimmerman coming in for the Mustangs. Down by one, and also one game. And unsuccessfully, we're all tied up to a piece. Nobody giving an inch right now. Whoa! Cash coming over the ball right on the outside of the block that was set by Thompson and Little. You watch this come up again, just right on the outside of that block, right down the line with it. Just a beautiful shot. Zimmerman leaves the game as Megan Maxwell prepares to serve. A rare error by Liz Ortegal. Point quarters. 
once heard somebody say when setters do that with their hands, it's an indication of a great setter. <laughs> Happens every once in a while. They don't seem to intimidate one another. If something doesn't work, they come back with something else, or they come right back with the same thing and make it work. They know it's what they do on their own side of the court that's really going to make the difference. That's right. Kozak with a tip, but Matt Marshall right there. Black tries to trip. Pick it up off of Ortigal. We got a substitution as we go side out. Lemmerman back in the lineup. When last she left, she buried one. Wagner goes back. She stays standing to stay warm, and Kozak to serve. Nice save by Ortigal. Black tries a little bit long. Point Lockport. Point Lockport. 5-2 Lockport, second game. They won the first double-A championship game. On a bit of a mini run here. Point, quarter. Point quarters. And we get timeout down and go south. I think looking at, at Judy Gresham and looking at Black, they kind of exchange glances and, and the two of them seem kind of baffled as to why she's being called for an illegal hit. As you look at uh, assistant coach Rich Gresham, we want to tell you that our next IHSA event on Sports Channel will be the 1993 Illinois High School Association Girls Swimming and Diving Championships next Monday at 7.30 p.m. Join us. But right now it's volleyball and the Porters are smiling in their huddle. Yes, they are. And they, but Julie, you can see Julie Hudson still telling them you're doing this and you've got to move the ball here and, and there's no sitting back here. They still have a lot of stuff to do out there. Both teams have come back enough times. You can't go through a season of almost 40, 45 matches and not have some times you're down and have to come back on a run. So let's see if that timeout successful the Mustangs. They're, Need to get a good pass so they can get an attack right off the bat. Pass is there to pick up the try save by Ortigal. Ortigal just tried to dump the ball, and she doesn't she doesn't really have the experience that a Nicole Peterson does. And it will take a while before she can be real successful with that all the time. Lock on the outside by Peterson and Leverman point quarters, and all of a sudden the porters are on a roll. Yes, they are. Tracy Black takes care of that. We've got to sign out. You know, Ann, Judy Gresham had said that Downers Grove had put so much emotion into beating Macaulay to, to be able to remain in the tournament get through the quarterfinals and she was a little bit concerned the way that they played in the semis and one has to wonder if if you put that much emotion into to going through one team and you're not really you know projecting it all the way through you can't afford any loss of concentration at this time and it's hard to maintain that kind of emotion it, it is terribly hard oh. to play with that much emotion and that one was a well-deserved call. <laughs> Lemmerman kind of took the ball from her chest and whipped it up over the net. Amy Thompson. Cole Peterson dumped it. Oh, it, it got away with it. There was no one there when she set, but 
Jennifer Peterson comes out of nowhere and sets it back. Right through there, shoot the ball into the backcourt, find a hole. Make it happen any way you can. Kristen Manley at the serve, replacing Tara Pass. because when you have a team like Downers Grove South, they can come back at any time and any little thing will give them the momentum. Coach Judy Gresham's done such a terrific job with these Downers Grove South Mustangs. It's their second consecutive year in the championship match, and that's one of the reasons why Tracy Black, Jennifer Peterson, nails it with a net violation on South. Doesn't make any difference. Side out. You can see ball coming back up again, being set, ball going to the outside, and Peterson just nailing the ball. Great camera work as Cole Peterson's back to serve. Back throw set for Tracy Black, picked up. Jennifer Peterson. Tracy Marshall. That is body control. We have a linesman call on the side. The ball hit the antenna. It's a good call. The One of the toughest places to see that is when it's right under your nose because you're looking for the path of the ball. It is. What needs to happen here is for the official to look at the linesman, see the ball hit, and you can see it hit into the antenna. serve here. Julia Hudson wants to talk about what that last call was and exactly what happened. It is confusing. What's happened is that apparently from our vantage point, the ball hit the antenna out of, which would be out of bounds, but the officials did not ask the lines person. That's Julia right. Hudson wanted her to ask and now they have done They asked one so. lines person. When they ask the other one, she will give them the same signal because she was signaling that way over in the corner and it was hers to call. It is the referee and umpire's right to call it, but they can ask for assistance as needed. And we'd like to say these lines persons donate their time, but they are officials. And several of them have been state officials that after they've served their term have come back to help their fellow officials. Yes, they have. And as you can see with the caliber of play here and the ball moving so fast that it is absolutely critical to have lines persons on the floor. table straightening up out everything we believe it's going to go side out to Lockport but we're waiting for that official call as you get a good look at all the fans that have inundated Redburn Arena here tonight and it is so loud I don't know how the players can hear each other call the ball I don't either except they're at this point in time they're used to how they're moving which puts them up 11-4. So right now, Judy Gresham's going to counter with a substitution and bring in number one, Karen Stuer, a sophomore, and will replace Amy Thompson. We look at this one more time. Look at the ball come across. It was set way outside, and the ball oh. is hit right into the antenna. There is no doubt about that. Both lines persons called the ball out of bounds. It was their call. 
There you see the championship match scores. We're in double-A action. I'm Ann Penson along with Bonnie Beach here at Redburn Arena at Illinois State University. And we're checking lineups to make sure after they rotate that we're in the quick rotation. Nicole Peterson will continue to serve. Up 11-4. Illegal hit. 12-4 Lockport. You know, Ann, it really is appropriate at this time to pay a small tribute to Coach Judy Gresham of the Downers Grove South Mustangs. She has been one of the pioneers in girls' volleyball. She has helped volleyball spread throughout the Chicagoland area. She has been one of the driving forces. Um, people who have always had a very strong team and has inspired those around her in the south suburban area and the western suburban area to have volleyball teams to provide those opportunities. And she has been a real inspiration to all of us. And I would, I would say that Illinois owes a debt of gratitude to Judy Gresham and people like her, and also to her assistant coach, Rich Gresham, who will be retiring this year as well, who has done much for girls volleyball and boys as well. While we're doing thank yous, that's so appropriate, Bonnie. Let's also thank Assistant Executive Secretary, Director Ola Bundy, who runs this tournament, has since its inception and does just an incredible job of keeping volleyball right at the top in the, in the nation. Ola Bundy is the grandma of all volleyball in the state of Illinois. She has been a wonderful administrator. And coming back in is Amy Thompson for the Mustangs. Also like to thank Linda Herman and her staff here at Illinois State University for this wonderful welcome all the volleyballers get every year. In the middle is the Midas. A little bit off time. It may work. <laughs> she did. She came in like a locomotive, slowed down, and off-speeded the ball. Back to serve Liz Ortigal and in need of some points. And they are capable. What a great team these Mustangs have been all year and also tonight. Lemmerman blocked, but inside, side out. Substitution for the quarters. Back in is Wagner. Will replace Amy Lemmerman. Senior for senior. This Lockport team is dominated by seniors. They've been here before, but never grasped the golden ring. Well, she is within reach now. Back to Teresa Midas. Block. Big block on the Jose and Peterson right there. Huge block. This is textbook blocking right up there. They are there at the time of contact, and the ball was set for an angle hit, and it was set beautifully. Possible championship point. Outside, pull little. Out of bounds, and the Porters are the new AA state champions. They have waited a long time. They've been here never the championship game, and they make their first appearance. The best one. And their fans enjoying them with them. Two great teams slugging it out. It was the Porter's night. It really was the Porter's night. After, after the initial fireworks, and especially during the second game, it was as if they could do no wrong. And that brass ring was not only theirs to grab, it was theirs to yank. Well, we'll be back with the awards after this fantastic match right after this. And now let's go to Julie Bolts for some special awards. Ladies and gentlemen, the Illinois High School Association has instituted a campaign to sport a winning attitude, sportsmanship, and to recognize it at the state tournament. Players, coaches, and spectators of each of the teams competing in the state tournament 
were evaluated by a volunteer a panel of judges. Please direct your attention to the Redbird Arena Volleyball Court. Presenting banners to the qualifying schools will be Leroy Newton from Carterville High School and Linda Lane from Fanger High School in Chicago. Winning banners for sporting a winning attitude at the 1993 Girls State Volleyball Tournament are Arlington Heights Hersey. Chicago Mother Macaulay. Crystal Lake South. Lincoln High School. Downers Grove South High School. and Lockport Township High School. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to now direct your attention to midcourt for the presentation of the first and second place team in individual awards for the Girls Class AA State Final Volleyball Tournament. Presenting the medallions and trophies for this Class AA Championship match, Mr. Leroy Newton, Principal of Carterville High School, Linda Lane, Principal of Finger High School in Chicago, and William Wright, Principal of Savannah High School. At this time, please meet the Mustangs of Downers Grove South who finished the 1993 season in second place with a final record of 38 wins and five losses. First, meet the principal of Downers Grove South High School, Dr. Craig Zeck. Head coach, Judy Gresham. Assistant coach, Rich Gresham. Assistant Coach, Denise Aridia. Assistant Coach, Ellen O'Brien. Number one, Karen Stoyer. Number two, Tracy Black. Number three, Kim Zelensky. Number four, Chris Williams. Number five, Nicole Little. Number six, Sarah Zimmerman. Number seven, Liz Ortigal. Number eight, Sally Butler. Number nine, Katie Wise. Number 10, Christy Boker. Number 11, Kelly Daly.
Number 12, Stacy Vargas. Number 13, Amy Thompson. Number 14, Tracy Marshall. And number 15, Carrie Zamitis. And manager, Julie Shaw. Now for the Porter, a lock court. To finish the 1993 as champions of the Class AA Volleyball Tournament. The Porters finished with a final record of 40 wins and 3 losses. First beats principal of Lockport High School, Mr. Robert Meter. Head coach, Julia Hudson. Assistant coach, Denise Hadley. Assistant coach, Andra Volgaris. Assistant coach, Sonia Jackson. Assistant coach, Libby Hallett. Number one. Rebecca Kwasniewski. Number two, Tara Pash. Number three, Stacy Wagner. Number four, Amy Lemmerman. Number five, Joy Cecil. Number six, Carrie Ann Kravitz. Number seven, Jennifer Peterson. Number eight, Megan Maxwell. Number nine, Christine Johnson. Number 10, Renee Zabel. Number 11, Nicole Peterson. Number 12, Sarah Kozak. Number 13, Terry Vashkellis. Number 14, Courtney Fisk. And number 15, Kristen Manley. Now will Coach Judy Gresham and the captains of Downers Grove South High School please step forward to receive their second place trophy. And Coach Julia Hudson and the captains of Lockport High School, please step forward to receive your championship trophy. They're the champions for AA, the Lockport Porters. And a happy crew they are. And we've got some other happy people that have been named to the all-tournament team. From Mother McCauley, Jenny Bell. From Crystal Lake South, oh, Jenny Nelson. Pleasure. From Downers Grove South, Tracy Marshall. Nicole Peterson and Jennifer Peterson from Lockport. And from Downers Grove South, Tracy Black and Terry Zemitis.
We'll be back right after this. Lockport High School has just won their first double-A IHSA state volleyball championship. And I'm standing here with two of the players who were very instrumental to that championship. Number 11 standing next to me is the setter general of the team, Nicole Peterson, and her twin sister, who is the um, one of the offensive sparks on the team, Jennifer Peterson. Girls, how does it feel? You've been, you've been down to the state tournament before. That is correct, and you've been on the team for four years. How does it feel to finally win the championship? It's awesome. It's the most wonderful feeling because we've been so close so many times. We've been down here, and this is our last year. It was do or die, and we did it. You know? That's, it was just a beautiful performance. How about you, Jennifer? I'm just so excited. We've worked so hard. Everything we've done all year long has been geared toward this tournament here, and it's, I'm just so happy to say we're finally number one. If you if you had advice to other teams who who had their sights set on a state championship and you could talk to them at the very beginning of the season, what would you tell them? Um, just to keep working hard for it, and that um, if they believe in themselves, they can do it. Definitely, I I have the same advice. And what do you think makes your own team so very very special? I I said to the girls before we started talking, they are one of the most balanced and one of the most beautiful teams we've had as a state champion. Um, I definitely think that's um, a big key. Um, I know I can count on anybody for a good pass, as, you know, being a setter, and <clears throat> anyone, I, anyone I set is always there for me. I can count on any one of them. So I think, yeah, definitely we have a balanced team. We don't have any really big superstars. We all work together. Well, that's great. We'd like to congratulate you once again, Thank you very Jennifer much. and Nicole. Thank you. We'll go to a break at this point, and then we'll come back with their coach, Julia Hudson. Having just won her first team IHSA Girls Volleyball State Championship, I'd like to introduce the coach of the Lockport Porters, Julia Hudson. Julia, that was quite a match, and congratulations. Thank you very, very much. You said before the match that you were a team of flamboyant offense and that you love to play against bangers and blasters, and certainly in the first game, that was pretty much the kind of show that you put on. Dennis Grove South is just an excellent team. Um, our scattering report said that they like to hit down line and hit hard, so I felt like we took that away from them and funneled the ball to one of our best defensive players, Jennifer Peterson, and I think that frustrated them um, offensively, and they just never got in track from that. What was different about this match than the first time that you played against them, that first time you went to three and you were a very convincing two-game winner this evening? Um, I think it came down to offensively that we were, were, we were hitting the holes and mixing our shots, and that really threw them off uh, passing-wise, and they never could get their offense going. I, I made mention to two of your players, to the Peterson Twins, that I think that your team is one of the most well-balanced and technically well-coached teams. Judy Gresham paid you quite a compliment um, before the match, and she said you are probably one of the most thorough coaches in preparation that she has ever coached against. Do you want to make a comment about that for, for posterity and other coaches? It's, a, it's quite a compliment. Yeah, um, we do spend a lot of time. It's just not myself. It's the coaching staff. We demand a lot of time out of ourselves, and we demand a lot of time out of the kids. And so uh, it's nice to see that life sometimes is fair and you get rewarded. Um, so I'm, I'm just real happy for the kids, the coaching staff, and, and ourselves. Well, Julia, that was spectacular. Congratulations, IHSA AA State Girls Volleyball Sounds Champion. Really and um, you even get to take the ball home. I'm sleeping with this tonight. All right. Congratulations, Julia. And we'll be back with closing comments. There you have it, the championship scores from Double A. The Lockport Porters, 15-9, 15-4 over the Downers Grove South Mustangs. And Bonnie, the 20th anniversary edition of this tournament was terrific. It was spectacular, Ann. It was everything that we thought it would be. It was full of the teamness of volleyball, which is probably 
I think one of the, the most team of team sports. Plus, we were able to see some very outstanding individuals, and it was a very exciting tournament. All of the um, improvement that has been made in volleyball, a great, a great deal of it due to Ola Bundy and the opportunities that the IHSA has provided for girls in the state of Illinois. And I just look at everything from the playing to the award ceremony. In 20 years, we've come a long way, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful progress. Well, you've been a big part of that, and I've really enjoyed working with you as usual. It's been fun. Our next IHSA event on Sports Channel will be the 1993 Illinois High School Association Girls Swimming and Diving Championships next Monday at 7.30 p.m. This event has been produced and directed by Dave Turner. The graphics coordinator is Doug Stanton. Our executive producer at Sports Channel is John Tui. Remote facilities provided by Trio Video of Chicago. Once again, the Class A champion is Breeze Modern Day. And the Class AA champion is Lockport High School. For Bonnie Beach, I'm Ann Penstone saying goodbye for now. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of Sports Channel.